highs peaking at 19 degrees. Then for your rainfall map for today, we're expecting up to a 40% chance of rain near Durban. Up to a 20% chance of rain is forecast near the low fault areas of Mpumalanga as well as for Limpopo. But that's for much later during the day. Otherwise, it's going to be fun and dry for much of South Africa. Now your winds for today are going to be very light for the central interior. Strong winds near Port Elizabeth as well as East London, varying between 35 and 40 kilometers per hour. Now we're expecting cool weather for the southern regions of the country. Sutherland peaking at 15 degrees, 18 near Da'ar. Much warmer near George with a high of 22 and we're expecting warm weather for Mbombela as well as for Richards Bay with temperatures in the mid-20s. Overnight temperatures will be dropping in the single digits over the central interior. Very cold near Bloemfontein as well as Bethlehem both dropping at minus one. 12 degrees near Peter Maritzburg, 6 for Joburg and 1 degree higher near Jacaranda City at 7 degrees. Now on Monday we are expecting clear skies for many locations across South Africa. A beautiful day is forecast near Uppington with a high of 26. We are expecting showers for Durban, East London as well as Port Elizabeth. Otherwise it's going to remain fun and dry for George and Cape Town. Then on Tuesday we are expecting another beautiful Day for Johannesburg and Pretoria with temperatures between 22 and 25 degrees, partly cloudy near Durban, East London, as well as Port Elizabeth, and showers are forecast for George and Cape Town. Well, that's all for now from the Weather Center. Have a good one. A very warm welcome to Africa 360. We bring you news and views with a distinctly African perspective. I'm Chris Marilang and welcome to this special election edition of Africa 360. South Africans head to the voting booth this week. It's also a special occasion as the country also celebrates 20 years since the first democratic elections in 1994. But the stakes have certainly changed. South Africans have much to consider as they cast their vote. And this week's episode of Africa 360 breaks down the politics, economics and the choices that lay ahead for the electorate. So voters have been bombarded by campaigning in the last few months from uh, public debates to billboards and SMSs and social media campaigns. Every one of the nearly 30 parties that are vying for attention of the voters in this election. But does a catchy slogan guarantee an efficient administration? Take a look. In recent years, widespread protest action has grabbed the headlines in South Africa. Some townships went up in flames as residents expressed their anger at what they call government's poor service delivery. Bekesdal, Motuklung and Bronkorspret were some of the hotspots. We've gone three weeks without electricity. We want the municipality to tell us what, what is the problem about the sewage system of this township. There have been a total of 48 service delivery protests since the beginning of this year alone. Despite the 20-year review released by President Jacob Zuma recently, they tried to paint a positive picture of improving living standards for the poor. When 95% of the households have access to water. The 5% who still need to be provided for feel they cannot wait a moment longer. <laughs> Success is also the breeding ground of rising expectations. Another factor driving demonstrations which often turn violent is widespread corruption. At the local government level, this hampers effective service delivery. 
Over the past five years, many municipal officials have been arrested countrywide, charged with crimes ranging from financial mismanagement to tender fraud. With elections around the corner, opposition parties are having a field day. They blame the ruling ANC for the upsurge in protests and accuse the government of increasing corruption. Even President Jacob Zuma is in their sights as the Nkandla corruption scandal hangs over his head. More of your money pays. It, it pays these ministers and deputy ministers instead of being used for you. We want to reduce that size of government. There are millions of people unemployed in our country and they are seeing hundreds of millions of rands spent on the private palace of one person. Like you, we saw a leadership installed under the cloud of criminal suspicion and personal scandal at the highest level. We have seen corruption take hold at every level of government. As elections approach, many opposition parties are promising to tackle the scourge of corruption head-on should they be elected. This may just have struck the right note with the electorate, but it remains to be seen whether this will swing the vote come the 7th of May. Joining us here in studio now is uh, Marie Harris from uh, the global market research company Ipsos and uh, political analyst uh, Professor Sipo Siepe. Let me start with you, uh, Marie. It must be a very uh, difficult market space for uh, the voter, for the electorate. How are you reading it? What are uh, the polls that you're reading before we go into this election indicating who's going to win? I think the ANC will be between 62 and 64 percent, which is lower than what they want to be. Mm -hmm. It's also lower than what they were last time. Mm -hmm. And the DA is going to be somewhere between 20 and 23 mm percent. -hmm. The EFF coming in third between five and six and a half. Interesting statistics, but it seems to also go against some of the other data that you have collected. And here also uh, you had this very interesting national satisfaction statistics around the perception of governance. Very low figures. In actual fact, when we look back uh, at similar periods from uh, 2009 coming to 2013, what we note here is that uh, the perception of government in general is under 50%. Yes. Less than 50% of the people are satisfied yes. with government. So why would they vote so highly for the ANC? Because all the people are not voting. There are about 36 million South Africans who are eligible to vote, who are 18 years and older, and only 25 million of them are registered. Mm -hmm. So 11 million of them, or of us rather, mm -hmm. are saying we are not even registering to vote, yeah. let alone speak about it. Mm -hmm. Then, about of the 25 million that are registered, mm -hmm. we can I'd say all of them will vote. Last, last time in, in 2009, 77.4% voted mm. of the registered voters. If that happens, it will be around 18, 19 million. Mm. So a further 6 million will not vote. So we already at about 17 million people who will not vote, mm. who are about the same as those who are voting. Mm. So half of the people who are eligible to vote actually in the end vote. This is an interesting statistic and it's a good place to bring in uh, uh, Prof. Uh, Sipo here. Why is it that people don't perceive uh, the polls or elections as a legitimate way of expressing their discontent around their perceptions on governance, uh, bad economy as we see from these statistics? Historically what we have always done is that whenever we are unhappy yeah. we go to the streets and uh, in a sense we fail to say to them translated that protest yeah. into something tangible where the person who are going, who is going to represent you might be somebody different yeah. but the, here's also the challenge the challenge that we also have is that uh, you often find that even the people who are protesting are also members of the ruling party so effectively what it does it makes it almost difficult people begin to say but what does a vote give me let's take a moment to hear what the politicians are promising and listen uh, to their manifestos in a nutshell. What I'm known for is service delivery. What I'm known for is, is good governance. What I'm known for is transparency and accountability. That is what we offer people of this country. Surely transparency in all tender procedures is a very important one. And the whole idea of uh, 